Bonjourno travel lovers, welcome to Wonderlust for Life, the channel that shows you European gems through food and memorable experiences. In this video, we are in Tuscany, Italy. And if you haven't watched our other Tuscany videos, I'll leave all the links down below and at the end of the video so you don't miss any of them. So we are going to hit up multiple Chiano, Pienza, and a short trip to Cortona here in the Val d'Orcia. So let's get into it. Before we jump into all of that, don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And now I just, I cannot believe we are here in Multiple Giano. We've seen um, the Endless Adventures video here, got really excited to come. We are about to go to a wine tasting, listening to somebody practice opera, like what? And we have these amazing views here. And now we have to kind of figure out how to get into the winery because there's a lot of different doors. <laughs> so we're gonna go try to figure that out now. We were seemingly at the wrong door, so there's this door. And then if you come down the street just a little bit, there's another door. So I think this is where the wine tasting is gonna be. But based on what we saw on the Alice Adventure, you go down and down and down and down, and you walk through the wine barrels, so I'm excited to see that. For the wine tasting, I'll tell you all the stories about it later. That was the Vino Noble di the Multiple Giano. And then Pecorino con Pienza, because that's what's really popular there. So good. So I think I'm just gonna try a sip of each and go back and finish. There is so much to unpack there. Basically, some guy, I think during the Dark Ages, found this um, Etruscan cave, and he was very poor. So he just set up shop there and lived there, and people called him crazy until, well, he started predicting the weather. And that was not a good thing at the time. So um, he was basically sent to Rome so that he could explain why he could predict the weather, <laughs> which was really just watching the hedgehogs. <laughs> But he kept saying, you know, it was magic or whatever. Ultimately, once he explained it to them, they were fine with it. They gave him a noble title. They gained lots of money. The family ended up being very famous and very rich and had lots of friends in the church. Built a palace and asked the architect to build a cellar underneath. And that is what Dorici is. It's the cellar of the family of Dorici. What? <laughs> Wine tasting. We are here at Catina Gattavecchi. Might be saying that wrong. I'll leave it on the screen. We are having the peachy pasta. I'm probably saying that wrong again. Um, with the wild boar ragu. I am in love with this kind of pasta. I am in love with the wild boar ragu. And we have some cheese put on top. And we also got some potatoes with cheese that is literally bubbling on top. Also, because apparently we haven't had enough wine, we got a reserva from this um, winery itself. So. This is going to be an amazing lunch. It smells delicious. So let's dig in. Okay, so this restaurant also is a winery, as I mentioned, but they have cellars down here. And similar to the other one, this is like the Etruscan era stuff. So we're going down, and he said this was an Etruscan tomb. Oh, okay. This was smaller than I thought. That's it. <laughs> cool? It's, it's really nice. It, the temperature's really nice down here, actually. Yeah, it's hot outside. It's over 30 degrees, I think. So if I didn't mention before, this is filmed during Corona times. So masks inside, always. Now back up. I didn't plan super great. <laughs> So we went in towards the center of town, hilltop town, mind you, to go back down the hill for lunch because I was like, oh, maybe it'll take a long time. So we parked down below there. No, <laughs> we're walking back up the hill to get somewhere 
pictures and stuff so you can see what multiple Giana looks like. And then we'll head down and go to another winery just outside of the center city. But it's quite a trek. I heard Pienza is very flat, so compare this to that later. But also I'm just out of shape. <laughs> These roads are so tiny, like a car just went by. We actually just hid in an alleyway <laughs> because like it's either that or like the stoop back here. It's so small, but it's so cute. And there are so many wine tasting places here. Uh, what's the name of that one? Poliziano? Poliziano. Poliziano. <laughs> um, we had that at the cheese farm and it is so delicious. If I'd known they had a tasting place here, I definitely would have done that. But, oh well, we're actually on our way to another tasting. Uh, so, hit in the car and heading out. We are here at Winery Day, D-E-I, for some wine tasting. We're gonna try rosé, white, and a bunch of reds tour the facility, and we're here because my friend Valentina told us to come here. Thanks, Valentina. Thanks, Valentina. <laughs> And we're back at our Agri Turismo from the winery day. The super cool thing about that winery is it's woman owned. She's owned it for 20 years. It was a nice little tasting and we ended up getting the Reserva, which is very delicious. We are starting to get some wines from this region that are made to actually keep for years and years and years. So we're starting a wine collection. Let me know if you would start a wine collection or if you're like, nah, I'm just gonna drink that stuff. <laughs> but I am on water now because I've had a lot of wine over the past week and uh, I think I need to slow it down a little bit. Um, but tomorrow is Pienza. I cannot wait. So we'll see you there. Cheers with water. <laughs> Okay, so we made it to Pienza. I have to say, again, parking was a little harder. It wasn't hard in Multiple Giano, but in some of the other places that we've been, um, it was really hard to find. And then we just came down this neighborhood and luckily right at the end, there's one more spot that we fit into. Yeah, driving to these towns, like you kind of have to, unless you take a tour, but it's not easy. And people do not tell you that, honestly. We've actually decided that uh, we would kind of almost rather take tours <laughs> or at least have a driver um, that's a guide. We think that would be a really good option as well. Um, but for now, I have no idea how long the walk to Bienz is. So we're gonna do that now. <laughs> First impressions of Pienza are, it is super cute, very walkable. Um, from what I read, this is um, a little bit more accessible of a city, so it's not super hilly, um, which is really nice, and obviously we found that to be true, but it is still very small. The fun thing about it is, apparently the history says that this guy named like Piccolomini um, had the money and influence to um, turn his hometown into what he considered a utopia, and that's how Pienza came to be, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it is pretty small. It is quite touristy, but it still has like a lot of charm and I love walking down a little street. Behind me we have at the cathedral. It does not stand out like to me cathedrals normally do, um, but it is still a cathedral <laughs> um, in a tiny town, which, you know, it, it used to be like the center of town and historically that's just where social stuff happens. And right next to it is the palazzo and it's actually named after this guy. So yeah, there's some things to visit here, but I think I would just suggest walking around, eating, um, Pecorino is very popular here and shopping, lots of cute stuff.
to find and take home here. We were very wrong. That was regular church. Now we're in the cathedral, but the front is covered with scaffolding, which is why we didn't see it. Um, but it is very beautiful. candle for my grandparents that are no longer with us and my friend from high school who passed away at 19 from cancer and I do that in pretty much every church we visit <laughs> so candles have been lit all over Europe for these people just my way of honoring them I wonder if do you guys do that like uh, like candles in cathedrals. I think it's a nice way to honor people, but also like to give a little to the church. Yeah, even though we're not <laughs> like super church going people, I still think it's a really nice thing to do. So we figure these things are to tie up your horses. That's kind of cool. Parking spots, old parking spots. <laughs> I am so tired of being hot. I am so tired of walking up hills. <laughs> finding parking spots. We are so earning that Michelin lunch tomorrow. I cannot wait. So that'll be in Cortona. Cortona. Not sure how to say it, but I'm um, so looking forward to that. And we are starting off at a restaurant here in Cortona. It is called Il Falconery. The Italian version, I'll leave the title up here. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a Michelin star restaurant and let me tell you, the road up here was tiny. I am actually slightly terrified going back down it. Um, but <laughs> I think that's just the case whenever you have a rental car, you're just like super paranoid um, about hurting it. And when you just don't know the area, that can be a little terrifying too. But um, we are really looking forward to lunch. And then after this, we are going to go explore the old town of Cortona. So yeah, let's get some food in our bellies. We've made it to Cortona. That Michelin star lunch was excellent. Um, you would expect that, but Sean and I had one in Venice and we've been told like, don't really eat Michelin stars in Italy because regular restaurants are amazing as well. But this one actually was amazing and we would definitely recommend it. And uh, yeah, it was just, it exceeds that level of expectations and that's what I look for in a Michelin star restaurant. Um, I wanna be completely honest, I mentioned like, Coming up that road was really scary. Um, I let Sean have the wine pairing, uh, so I just like took a sip of each. So I drove back down and I actually cried before and after getting on that tiny road. I was so scared. I was gonna encounter somebody and I wouldn't know what to do and there wasn't room, but we made it. We didn't actually encounter anybody, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so we parked in some free parking right outside the city gates. Here's the city wall right behind me. And we're hoping to kind of see all that there is to see in Cortona. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. What's crazy about some of these towns is just how ancient they really are. That gate that we just walked through is from the second century BC during the Etruscan era. And it's just like, how does stuff like this still exist? 